It is Friday, June 25th, 2021, and it is the National Newspaper Publishers Association's annual convention, and let it be known what a big night ahead. It was a big night last night. We're going to talk about the convention. We're going to talk about the Arizona Informant, one of our flagship newspapers uh, this morning with Clovis Campbell, the publisher of the Arizona Informant. La last night during the convention, there was the Messenger Awards and some of the newspapers that were honored were the St. Louis American, the Birmingham Times, the Houston Forward Times, the Final Call, Richmond Free Press, Texas Metro News, the Afro-American in Baltimore, Michigan Chronicle, New Pittsburgh Courier won some awards as did our weekly Los Angeles, the Houston Defender, Savannah Tribune, Atlanta Voice, Jackson Advocate and Seattle Me Medium also were among the big winners at the Messenger Awards uh, last night. In fact, right now, let us show you a little bit of uh, a video about our conference. Exciting, exciting week for the National Newspaper Publishers Association and all the Black Press of America. Good morning, Claudette Perry, the executive administrator. Annette Phillips is watching and so many others, Bobby Henry. Um, let's get into the news, though. Right now, uh, Dick Gregory, he took on a lot of challenges. The respected comic used humor to deliver messages about injustice. As reported in this week's Washington Informer, Dick Gregory then turned into a focused civil rights advocate. Uh, activists working closely with Mega Evers and Martin Luther King Jr. Then he became an evangelist for healthy eating. It's all there. And the one and only Dick Gregory, a documentary pre premiering on July 4th on the Showtime Network. They called it a six-year labor of love. The film was directed, produced, and written by Andre Gaines. Clips from uh, Dick Gregory's appearances from late night television are intertwined between comments from his wife Lillian and four of his 10 children. So we're looking forward to that uh, documentary on the late great Dick Gregory. Also in the news this morning, Def Jam Records founder Russell Simmons has collaborated with Tokyo to launch an NFT, non-fungible uh, tokens collections named Masterminds of Hip Hop. The collection is built alongside legendary musicians who were the original rappers of hip hop. The exclusive joint venture will give credit and compensation back to the original musicians, mus <laughs> can't talk this morning, y'all, musicians who helped to create the multi-billion dollar industry that hip hop has become. In a statement to the black press, uh, Russell says, I often think of the early days of pre-recorded hip hop when it was only a performance art. Some rappers and DJs pioneered the space and made it so popular that the recording of rap artists was imminent. 
He says, none of them have received the accolades that he believes they deserve. And this is my chance to use a new vehicle to revisit and repay these amazing artists while they are still living. So uh, kudos to Russell Simmons uh, and what he's doing for the legends of hip hop. And right now, speaking of hip hop, here's a hip hop legend himself, our president and CEO, Dr. Ben Chavis. Good morning, Dr. Chavis. Good morning, Stacey Brown and on behalf of the National Newspaper Publishers Association. Uh, we are into our national virtual convention on behalf of Karen Carla Richards, our chair and our whole executive committee and all the 230 African-American owned newspapers and media companies across the country. Uh, this is another Friday and we welcome everybody to uh, let it be known. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the convention, Dr. Chavis is off to such a history making start. We've had appearances already by Dr. Fauci, Dr. Um, Rochelle Walensky, uh, White House advisor, Cedric Richmond and others and vital discussions on rare heart disease. It's a really important discussion on ATTR CM, that rare heart disease that really affects uh, mostly African-American or a large portion of African-Americans. Um, uh, that, that disease is really critical. You, you can go back and look at that uh, part from yesterday. Uh, there's the, there was also a great public awareness and education panel or discussion between Dr. Chavis and the education trust CEO, Denise uh, Fort. And the convention continues to be full of exciting, informative and educational value. Even during a break, we got some big and exclusive news from Jerome Benton of the legendary music group, The Time. Jerome has announced to the black press exclusively that Purple Rain 2, the sequel to that 1984 Oscar winning blockbuster, Purple Rain, Princess Purple Rain, is in the works. He has been collaborating with uh, Terry Lewis. You all know Terry Lewis, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. And this is forthcoming, Jerome Bitten tells us. Again, another exclusive for the Black Press at the convention. You can still register because today is a huge day. You can still log on to www.virtualnpa2021.com. Dr. Chavis, there are some more surprises I know you have up your sleeve. Can you kind of fill us in uh, on today's activities? Well, we, we are hearing and uh, we're expecting uh, that President Biden himself uh, will speak uh, to the Black Press of America exclusively at our convention this morning. Uh, we start at 11 o'clock Eastern time um, and we are excited about that. And all of the people that you've named from the administration who have already spoken, uh, we have some good workshops this morning, uh, vital information. And then this evening, I mean, this evening is going to be off the charts. Uh, we have 10 uh, persons that we are given awards to. Uh, we have a stellar performance uh, by um, Shaka Khan, a performance by John P. Key, uh, a performance by Candace Horace. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, we're really going to um, have a celebration of the 194 years of the Black Press of America. And then, of course, there are elections, regional elections and uh, national elections, membership uh, today. Uh, to take care of some of the, uh, you know, internal business of the NMPA as a trade association. Uh, but, you know, we're moving forward. And by God's grace, uh, the Black Press of America uh, is growing, it's expanding and having great impact. And I'm looking forward to uh, Clovis Campbell, a uh, former chair of the NMPA and distinguished publisher of the Arizona Farmer, hopefully uh, being with us today. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Yesterday, we, we were treated to Bobby Henry in that great fishing outfit. Well, let's check out what Clovis is wearing today. Good morning to Clovis Campbell. Good morning. How are you doing, Stacey? Dr. Chavis, good to see good you. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. Uh, how, you know, we know that you're in uh, hot temperatures in Phoenix, but Phoenix is a great place. I want to thank you again for the Arizona Black Rodeo. We had such a great time in Phoenix and uh you know, right after this convention, I, I plan to find, uh, take some days. I'm heading your way, man. Well, come on out, man. We'll put you back on one of our horses. All right. And I know you are also a great golfer. Uh, I'm glad to let you know, Clovis, that the uh, PGA Tour, the PGA Tour is now developing a partnership with the uh, NMPA. So 
we'll, you know, we'll, you, you are our golfing expert. You have to help us guide <laughs> us along the way. I, I'd love to do it. I'm glad to hear we have that type of partnership with your leadership, Dr. Chavis. Well, Clovis, uh, show everyone your golfing gear, your, your pants. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm getting ready to do it every Friday. We do something, so there we are. Oh, oh, that's great! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Look, we, we had, like I said, we had Bobby in his fishing outfit yesterday, and we got <laughs> Clovis getting ready to hit the links. Uh, Clovis, what are you doing? 18 hole there. Look, look at that classic <laughs> photo right there. That is classic Bobby Henry right there. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna play 18 holes, but you know, not, there's nothing like Dr. Chavis with his always popular black suit that he got on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to get me some uh, golf course gear. I, I, you know, I, I may show up uh, with a black suit on, uh, on on the hole number one and people look at me like I'm crazy. Uh, you know, I heard that uh, Bob Bogle, one of our distinguished publishers uh, from Philadelphia, the publisher of the Philadelphia Tribune, where I think we were having a conference somewhere on the beach and uh, Brother Boga showed up at the beach and his whole staff with suits and ties on at the beach. Oh, yeah. yeah that, was, that was in the Bahamas. I remember that well. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But, 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 but Clovis, um, we always, um, your family, you know, you're, uh, more than one generation uh, in the black news business. Uh, tell us about the Arizona informant and how it got started and, and where it's headed today. Well, thank you, Dr. Chavis. Um, you know, it, it's been, we, we're getting ready to celebrate 50 years here at the Arizona Informant this year. December 2nd, we'll have our 50th anniversary dinner with all of our community people here and hand out some awards and really just talk about the history that we've recorded yes. as a black newspaper. And so, you know, we started in 1971. My dad, who was a politician at the time and also a photographer, ad salesman, uh, layout design, you name it when you own a black newspaper. He decided it was time for him to get into the business and uh, they bought our paper for $1. And <laughs> 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 okay, no, you got me on that one. Um, we've, uh, and, and, and for 50 years, we've been doing just that, recording black history, just as every member of the NNPA does. Great, and um, well, I think one of the, I'm glad you said that, uh, Clovis, uh, to let people know that there's a growing African-American community in Arizona, in, in Phoenix. A lot of people may not uh, be aware of the growing diversity. And in fact, Phoenix is one of the fastest growing cities uh, in America today. Definitely. We've, uh, you know, after this last census, we picked up almost 800,000 people. Uh, unfortunately, we still didn't get a new congressional seat, but as things can't came out, we do have a lot of people that have moved to the Valley, a lot of African-Americans. And so we're seeing a lot of things that we do that we normally see down South and, and back East is happening in Arizona now, as far as black folks are concerned. Wow. Uh, Clovis, a lot going on. So we, um, Dr. Chavis alluded to this earlier. Uh, you guys kind of talked a little bit about this, the rodeo. Tell us about the rodeo um, that oh. you were involved in. The Arizona Black Rodeo is is a love of myself and my wife Lynette. She um she is the, the glue that makes this thing work. I just do going out to raise the money, but Lynette is always out there working with the cowboys, working with the staff to make sure we do it. We've been doing it now for uh, 15 years. Uh, Arizona Black Rodeo is 10 years old, and we've actually just started out with uh, Black Rodeo USA. So what we do is talk about the history of Black cowboys. The cowboys actually came. The word cowboy came from black cowboys. So uh, we talk about that history, give people a lesson in uh, uh, African-American history and relates to the West, talk about the Buffalo soldiers, but then we treat them to a real cowboy experience, calf roping, steer wrestling, steer undressing. And of course we do the uh, bull ride. Yeah, and, and it's a testament to um, Clovis that the, the fact is our black owned newspapers, you, you publishers, uh, what people need to understand if they don't already understand is the work you do in the community. It's not, not just putting out the news that um, informs our community, but you do a lot of work in the com in the uh, community. How important is that, uh, Clovis? Well, I, I was brought up uh, working in the community. My dad was an activist, uh, 
similar to how Dr. Chavis is an activist in the community that he served. So, you know, it was a natural thing for me to just continue to get involved, working with different schools, working with different organizations. We do, this year we gave over 10 scholarships at the Black Rodeo. And uh, we're really proud of that fact that we can give back to the community, make sure that people are getting involved in the process and we're preparing people, or the young people for the next level so that they can take over when we're done. Yeah, we talked a bit about that yesterday with Bobby Henry of the West Side Gazette, too. And, and I, I said it yesterday. I know Dr. Chavis is, is really, um, you know, he's really a proponent of getting young people involved. I want you to also talk about getting young people involved. So I, I think it's very important. You know, uh, I came up in the black press about the same time that Bobby did. So we were kind of parallel and, and came up together in NNPA. And, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, everybody gets old at some point and you still have to have fresh news out there. The key to making sure we have an audience of the future is to make sure that we put our young people on the front pages and in the stories of our publications. That way they see themselves in print and they say, hey, you know, I can see myself on the, on the Internet anytime. But when I see my picture in a paper, that means a whole lot more. And that, means, that, that generates more people looking at our newspapers. So we want to get the young people involved in the process. Yeah. And, and Bobby, uh, Bobby, <laughs> and Clovis, <laughs> Bobby's on the mind, right? But mm -hmm. Clovis, talk about, too, we, we've been talking about this a lot, and I, I don't think we can talk about this enough, the job that our chair, Karen Carter Richards, and that executive team, that all black women executive team we have, have has done over the past two years, especially given um, the pandemic over the past year plus, um, talk about uh, that, how the Arizona informant has been able to navigate uh, this uh, pandemic. Well, you know, our, our chairwoman, Karen Carter Richards, has done just an awesome job, you know, navigating through this pandemic, something that no one else has ever experienced before as chair or president of NNPA. And the job she's done to raise the kind of funding along with Dr. Chavis and their team is just awesome. So uh, I'm proud of that fact. And then you talk about uh, black women, strong black women in our organization. And earlier you mentioned Dick Gregory and some of the things he did. I remember talking to him and hearing him speak in Arizona. And he mentioned that the cornerstone of a black community is a strong black church, a strong black press, black press and strong black women. And uh, those three things make up our community. So when you talk about the women we have leading our organization right now, there couldn't be any finer women than the ones we have. And the Arizona informant is trying to do the same thing and making sure that we include women and young people in our process. So uh, we're for it and uh, we're excited to have Karen as our new chair. Yeah, and, and you mentioned 50 years. Uh, what's on tap for the anniversary this year? Well, you know, we're gonna hand out some community awards, uh, recognize some of our leaders. As you know, uh, we all get older and we wanna make sure we give some people their roses on top instead of uh, you know putting them on the grave. And uh, so we'll be doing that. We'll have a lot of entertainment. We've got some local folks. Uh, as you know, CeCe Pennison was from Arizona. We're hoping to have her appear here and, and perform along with some other jazz people. So it's gonna be a celebration, not a whole lot of, of uh, keynote speakers and things, but more of a black tie celebration, Louisiana style. Oh, sound, sounds good. I, I wanna throw it over to Dr. Chavis. Well, I, I want to publicly thank uh, Clovis Campbell uh, for his leadership, not only in Arizona, but throughout uh, America. Uh, it was in 2014 uh, that uh, Clovis Campbell uh, uh, helped. Uh, actually, he was the chair of the board uh, that retained uh, my services. And it's been a great journey uh, since 2014. Actually, I've been writing for the Black Press uh, since I was um, 11 years old in the uh, sixth grade uh, with the Carolina Times in uh, Durham, North Carolina, and you mentioned John mm -hmm. P. Key also mentioned the importance of the Carolina Times and all the black newspapers in North Carolina, the Wilmington Journal, the Carolina, the Carolina Peace Baker, the Charlotte Post, the County News, uh, uh, the Winston-Salem Chronicle. We have so many papers, but I just want to thank uh, Clovis uh, for helping uh, provide an opportunity for me to work and serve uh, the NMPA. Well, you know, when uh, we made that decision to bring you on board, uh, Dr. Chavis, it was a no brainer. And uh, we had already been working with you on the Wilmington 10 project, something I think we need to really start talking about again. Yes. As we start talking about black history and we talk about Tulsa and, and some of those other areas that the that white folks did us wrong. 
we need to talk about the Wilmington 10 and bring our project back up to the forefront and get that movie moving again, Doc. Oh, absolutely. That's, the, that's 1971 also. So it's, it's the 50 year anniversary of the yes. Wilmington 10 uh, this year also. Uh, so when you have your uh, celebration, um, we're going to make sure we'll be out there to support you for the 50th anniversary of the Arizona Informant. Uh, you're always welcome. And hopefully we'll even drag Stacy out there with us too. Bring absolutely. Out there <laughs> you don't, you don't have to drag me, Clovis. I'll be, okay. Thanks, I'll Thanks, be there. Man. Hey, so uh, this is the uh, week of the convention. As as we noted earlier, a lot of great stuff has already occurred. Uh, today is a huge day. What are you looking forward to, uh, Clovis? Well, you know, a lot of the dialogue amongst publishers, that's always the key thing to any conference that we have is to make sure that our publishers are engaged in the, comp the workshops that we have. So I'm looking forward to hearing some speakers as well. And then, uh, you know, we've had some business we have to take care of as a, as a, as a body. So we've got a full day. And, and uh, you know, it's nice that uh, we're doing it virtual this year for once. Uh, and I can actually go out and play some golf and then still get back <laughs> to the meeting in time. So uh, I'm happy. I mean, it's, it's been a tough year for us. And to be able to pull off such a high quality uh, event as we had so far, uh, uh, the whole team is commended at NMPA. Yeah, it, it is, uh, Clovis. We, we talked about that with the chair. We had the chair on a couple of days ago, and we, we talked about last year. It was the first time we had to go virtual, and it turned out uh, it was received so well. Folks started imitating what we did, and, and so it really put the pressure on us to, to really, uh, you know, top it this year. And that's always, you know, it's always a, a tough thing to, to try and top a masterpiece. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, when you have people around you like your team that can put it together, it's no wonder that you guys keep doing a better job every year. So I'm proud to be a part of this organization, proud to be a part of this conference coming up all day and, and, and proud to be a part of everything that's been happening to this point. So uh, you guys keep up the good work. So, Clovis, uh, do you play with a handicap or, or are you just that good? <laughs> oh please, and I'm you know the older I get, the higher my handicap gets. So you know, I definitely play with a handicap. We got the young guys. I get a few strokes from them, and uh, I get lucky every now and then. So uh, I'm I'm just happy to be out there playing, and 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 blessed to be able to be in Arizona where we can play year round. Well, yeah, until ten o'clock, right? <laughs> when that sun comes out. <laughs> well, you know, you, you got to be smart. You can play in the sun, or you can and can drink water, or you can sit out there and bake. So we know how to do it just right out here. Yeah, and, and so uh, Clovis, you know, again, we talked about the fiftieth anniversary of the Arizona Informant. Uh, what can when we open the pages um, in the coming weeks of the Arizona Informant? What can we expect to see? Well, you know, we have a lot of things going on in Arizona right now. And of course, our uh, in politics, which is something I'm, I'm kind of close to, uh, our, our senator here, um, Kirsten Sinema, has been working a lot on the Hill to do some things with the infrastructure bill. Uh, also, you're talking about the filibuster issue. So those are some things that we'll be talking about because black folks here in Arizona make a difference in these elections because we, we, we tilt it one way or another. So they have to make sure they listen to us, but we have to make sure we're on top of that. In addition, you know, like any other city, we have some uh, some uh, some some police issues that that we continue to work with. Not just in Phoenix, where my good friend Jerry Williams is a police chief here, but also in some of the outlying cities. We just had an issue uh, yesterday. I had a young man come into our office. He uh, he was basically arrested for having his music up too loud in the city of Scottsdale and, and and had to spend the night in jail because of that. Instead of giving him a ticket, they put they arrested him and put him in jail. So we're still dealing with those types of things. And, and it could have escalated to something else uh, had he not been such a calm individual and not understood the way he has to deal with the police out here. So we've got the same issues across the country, across the board as everybody does across the country. But we're going to be monitoring them and we're going to make sure if we got a hot topic. NNPA is going to definitely be able to share it with the rest of our members. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we can count on that. And in addition to, to that, uh, Clovis, um, what else is going on in Arizona that, that the rest of the nation uh, should know about? <laughs> Besides the fact that it's 118 some days out here, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we uh, and, and I'm an ambassador for Arizona. I try to make sure we get as many people as we can to come visit, especially uh, black folks. We have a lot of things going on here. Uh, but, you know, right now, Arizona's our, our, our big things 
We're going to be getting the Super Bowl coming up in a couple of years. We've got some uh, other programs and projects that are, are coming around. So uh, we're trying to make sure that when we got an election with a new governor, we'll be electing in a couple of years. So, uh, you know, the political scene is really big right now in Arizona because of the domino effect. You know, when one person leaves one office, everybody starts to move around and chase after those offices. So it's going to be an opportunity for black folks to move into power. We may even elect our first black congressman here in Arizona soon. And you may even have an NBA champion this year. Well, you know, we we you know, I didn't even want to mention that, but you're gonna try to jinx, you're gonna try to jinx us. We got beat last night, but uh, <laughs> but the Phoenix Suns uh, are are in a position to do something that they've never done, and that's win an NBA championship, like you said, Stacy. Uh, we're rooting for the Suns, and and hopefully uh, they'll come home from uh, from LA with some uh, victories and we'll be able to have one more game when we have a celebration and a big parade out here. So we're looking forward to seeing the Suns do well. Yeah. And, and they might, they might need you over there at uh, what's that chase field. Uh, oh, with the Diamondbacks. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you know, can, can, uh, can you, can you pitch? Can you swing <laughs> the bat Clovis? Hey, you, that's about all I can do is swing the bat. Like I swing a golf club. <laughs> And that's not too hard. But, uh, yeah, our Diamondbacks are having some problems right now. But, uh, you know, we'll be seeing what goes on in the future. They'll be building for the future. The good thing is with our football team, the Cardinals, are going to be tough this season. And I think they're building in the right way. So watch out for the Arizona Cardinals this year. Dr. Chavis, you notice that you can talk any topic with Clovis Campbell, and you're gonna, <laughs> it's going to go in depth. Absolutely. That, that's one of the great things about uh, Clovis and, and, and many of our uh, publishers. Uh, Dr. Chavis, your closing thoughts before Clovis hits the links. <laughs> well, I, I, again, um, Clovis Campbell not only has his um, hand on the pulse of Black America in Arizona and in the Southwest, but Clovis and I have also traveled uh, internationally. We had a great trip to Germany together where we looked at uh, the German press vis-a-vis -vis the black press in America. And we discovered all these uh, African Germans, Afro-Germans uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Germany. Uh, but the thing I wanted to say to Clovis that our theme of the convention is uh, the black press matters. And of course we know that black lives matter, the black press matters, the black church matters, black women matters, black families matter. And I just wanna close on the point that I think um, Clovis represents uh, a family-owned business. Uh, he's mentioned how he works uh, with his wife and others to do the rodeo. But I, I just want to say a salute uh, to the Campbell family uh, in business and in community. And I think that all of our families around the country, whether you're in the publishing industry or whatever industry, it's time for all of us to work together and, and not be distracted. There's so many distractions out there. And I think it's time for unity in our community and pushing forward. Uh, so we always strive for excellence. And in my book, uh, Clovis Campbell represents not only one who strives for excellence, excellence, but who attains excellence and then shares the benefit of his excellence with our brothers and sisters in the community at large. So salute to you, Clovis Campbell. Hey, thank you, Dr. Chavis. I always tell myself I did. I made two good decisions in my life. One, I got married to my wife, and the other is when we hired Dr. Chavis as our president and CEO of NPA. Wow. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And listen, as as spoken of, there, there will be an election today. So while that's going on, we got another surprise for everyone. We got Columbus Short live. And also, today is the day that the um, sentencing of former police officer Derek Chauvin uh, occurs and we're expecting a call in from attorney Ben Crump and the family of George Floyd. So stay tuned all day long, uh, virtual NNPA 2021.com. And as we celebrate the black press's 194th anniversary with legacy awards tonight and special performances by John P. Key, Candace Hoyle, Hoyas, and a special concert by Shaka Khan. Remember the words of the late great Jackie Robinson, who in part said, the black press was banging away at all those Jim Crow barriers in baseball. I never expected the walls to come tumbling down in my lifetime. The value of the black press, let it be known. We will see you soon. <laughs>